welcome to Nilox tutorial I have come over another video on the thumbnail you can see that uh, I have come up to a to the solution of a problem uh, for Raspberry Pi in which through which you can uh, easy, easily remotely uh, connect your Raspberry Pi to the laptop or PC or desktop using SSH uh, and you can at the same time program your Raspberry Pi with the help of it so at first we have to know what is ssh ssh means secure uh, shell uh, especially for python based uh, uh, or linux based devices and with the help of it you can remotely connect any devices running linux or linux distros like unix type or unix and many more so without any further ado let us proceed on our video first uh, let us see uh, the software which we'll be using uh, as an interpreter uh, in order to upload the code to your Raspberry Pi via SSH. Uh, this software name is Tony. You can see, and it is a very it is a very popular software, uh, uh, Python IDE. Uh, you can say uh, through which you can uh, program with the help of. Uh, some interactive tools and uh, you can easily program your any devices like micro python based devices that is sp8266 or PyBoard or the hottest or the recent uh, microcontroller that has been introduced that is from the raspberry pi corporation that is raspberry pi pico you can control it with the help of thony and you can program it and as at the same time uh, <clears throat> you can program your raspberry pi using via ssh using this interactive uh, python id that is thony and the most important uh, or the most interesting thing about thony is that you can uh, program your uh, any types of devices microcontrollers or single board computers or even uh, your uh, at your pcs without having any python libraries that means without having uh, python ideally or python installed on your computer or pc and it is a very uh, useful tool uh, in order to <coughs> for the developers especially uh, who are curious and all, also the enthusiasts uh, several types of micro python or my python projects uh, i'll not go uh, in details about micro python because it is another type of python which is especially <coughs> invented for some microcontrollers now uh, let us go to the connection first of the raspberry pi then we will go to coding section and how to upload code in your raspberry pi with the help of thony that is this python ide Hello everyone. Uh, let us proceed on uh, to the connection set and setup of the for the simple demonstration of uh, of the Raspberry Pi uh, by which you can uh, connect with your PC via SSH and you can program from your PC and the output will be at Raspberry Pi. Forget about all of this. This uh, it is uh, Arduino Nano and this is ESP8266 and this is. Uh, a simple power adapter uh, or you can say a 5 volt or 3.3 volt power adapter uh, converter so, so we will not be going through all of this you have to exclude all of this for this uh, for now uh, let us see about the raspberry pi this is a raspberry pi model 3b plus uh, which isn't the recent version the recent version is raspberry pi model 4b i think and uh, and it is a very previous version i think it is about uh, three years back since uh, this raspberry pi has been uh, manufactured by element 14 uh, i think okay uh, so you can see from here that from the uh, top corner at the left uh, and if we go down up to that at the second pin we have connected uh, that is the GPO pin. Uh, you have, you all, I think you know that uh, there are 40 GPIO pins, and among that, I have connected to the third GPIO pin of Raspberry Pi model 3B plus. Uh, wiring point is given, it's connected uh, to the ground. You, uh, it is the 39th pin of the 39th GPIO pin of the Raspberry Pi. You can see that. Uh, 
this is the last pin, uh, the right one, and the left one is the 39th pin, that is the ground pin uh, in this case, to a LED. <coughs> so, <coughs> at first we'll connect to the positive uh, side of LED. Uh, okay. uh, for this, we have to connect it with uh, this, uh, because on a breadboard, the straight ones, that means in a, the, a column, the holes in a column in a single column represent the same note and on the hair uh, the on a single row the all the holes represent a same note in this case positive ground or positive terminal of the led pin and this is the negative terminal uh, by which we have connected at first uh, through a resistor in order to limit the current of the led and so that the led doesn't get damaged screen and we shall be connecting our Raspberry Pi via SSH using this Thony Python ID that I've discussed before so for that you have to go to at first tools then go to options then from this option window we have to select the interpreter and interpreter is the one that will be used to upload your code okay to so upload your code by checking each lines of code and upload your code to that device and in this case there are many options which interpreter or device should thon use for running your code which is the question that will be asking you uh, to you in order to run your uh, raspberry pi uh, to uh, connect the device that you will be connecting to okay so it can be anyone uh, let us slide up the wind uh, down the window uh, the remote python 3, micropython ssh, micropython bbc micro, micropython raspberry by pico, micropython esp32, 82866 and there are many other versions of micropython based and python based uh, <coughs> environment by which you can upload your code into. So we will be selecting this one that is remote python 3 or ssh because MicroPython isn't supported uh, in Raspberry Pi and it is only supported on the uh, products microcontrollers, especially uh, on like Raspberry Pi Pico, ASP32, ASB286, Node MCU, and so on. So we have to select Remote Python 3 SSH, okay? To remote select Remote Python 3 or SSH. Then we will uh, d uh, put the host or details that is the IP address uh, by which you have uh, you have been assigned your Raspberry Pi and it is very much necessary to fix your Raspberry Pi's IP address that is because um, without <coughs> having a static IP address you can connect your Raspberry Pi clearly because you have to always check your IP address then uh, through advanced IP scanner or your router login page or etc etc so you have to fix your ip address and we will be uh, i will be going through another video by which uh, which will show you uh, how to uh, fix your ip address and now you have to select username as pi and authentication path method as password uh, though there are many other options like public key or public key with first passphrase and with that process but we will not proceed with this we will proceed on with password option and interpreter will be python 3 as is well okay then we'll select OK. Okay. Then there will be a pop-up uh, window again that will come. That is the um, that will prompt you to give a password. Okay. In in this case, you have to write the password of your Raspberry Pi, which is which is Raspberry Pi default. But I have already changed my password, and so <clears throat> I'll be using this password in order to connect. Uh, okay, uh, now you can see that uh, there has been written Python 3.7.3, which is the Python version that that is using that is been, that has been using by Raspberry Pi in order to compute uh, or in, uh, execute the Python programs. Uh, go to at first uh, a predefined example. Uh, 
that I have that I have uh, already that I've already executed that is first forget about the naming let us go to the code okay uh, and this is the library that is the rpi.gpio that is the gpio pins in order to import your gpio pins and that is the time that which will be using for the delay purpose that is the blinking of your led okay the blinking of your led and this is the set mode option you will get your raspberry pi's gpio pin by which part which for which purpose you are using there are two options that is gpio.bcm and there uh, there is another option that is gpio.board uh, we will be using gpio.bcm in order to execute this project or blinking led project and then we'll pin of your that is the gpio pin of your led and this is uh, nothing but <coughs> the second pin uh, as uh, you can see here okay and this is your uh, whole program and it is a for loop by which you will be e uh, executing this blinking of reality that means here it is 10 so we will be executing the blinking of led 10 times that means it will blink for 10 times it will be on and off for 10 times so it is it has been given 10 you can uh, change it at like as you want okay so it will be and then it is the true and false output gpa output that is the true false library that that will be using for in order to uh, blink your led for blinking your led that is to make the led on you will select true and for led off you have to select false so i have written it and that time slip is that the delay uh, of transition from true false that means the on to off period and this is the time of transition from off to on period that is the one second okay one millisecond okay let us uh, execute the code you can see here that the led is blinking for some time and it will go for 10 times you will see that soon it will be turning off as you can see that the led has been turned off because i have made this project uh, to run for 10 times that means the blinking of led turning on and off for 10 times and it will go to the default mode that is the false mode by itself after 10 times or the repeating after repeating 10 times so this is my video, simple video on how you can control your Raspberry Pi uh, using SSH so that you can program your uh, Raspberry Pi from PC and you don't need to connect by SSH using PuTTY or WSL Linux or Ubuntu uh, of Windows or even you can you don't need to use VNC server or this is the simplest way I think I have got so i have come over it so bye for now <laughs>